now lately I finally uh, I feel like doing something with it. Mark, you've made albums with uh, After Forever, Epica, mm -hmm. and now with May May Mayan. Mayan, uh, Mayan, <laughs> Mayan with Mayan. Um, if you have to compare those three bands, the music that you make, um, well, what can you say about this music style that you that you're doing right now with with Mayan? I think Epic and After Forever were already different, but they could still be named on the same uh, how you say that style. But uh, I think Mayan is is something completely different. That's way heavier, brutal, more progressive. Uh, less easygoing, I think. So, it's an album that you need to listen to quite some times be before it gets you. I think. What happened to you the last few years that you've became more brutal, more, more heavy, got, heavy I riffing? Got, got frustrated. No, <laughs> how come? Or what is it? No, no, it, it's uh, it's something I uh, heavy music I've been listening to since I was young already. Bands like Death, uh, Gorefest, Sepultura, but. Um, uh, now lately, I finally uh, I feel like doing something with it. It's it's part of my roots. Uh, I like expressing also the m most heavy uh, music styles. So I, th I think the the right moment, the right time, that thing, it just needed to happen. Uh, you collaborate with many artists on this album. Um, how come? Can you? Can you pick a few names and tell me how, how you started working together? Uh, yes, uh, Flora and Simone, they are the obvious choices for this album. Uh, I, we work with them because it was a wish already from many fans all over the world to have Simone and Flora singing on one album. For several reasons, it never happened with After Forever or Epica. So this was the, the unique possibility. Uh, personally, I also really love both of their voices, so it was not only a wish of the fans, but also uh, for ourselves a good thing. And they are quite approachable for us because we know them. Uh, the less uh, obvious choices are Henning Basse and uh, Laura Macri. And uh, Laura is she's an opera singer in Italy. She's very talented. She's uh, uh, recently she's been winning some some awards for for opera singing so her uh, star is rising I think we got her at the right moment before she gets famous and uh, Henning uh, he's, he's uh, already several years active in, in several bands like Metallion, Sons of Seasons and I think he's one of the most talented male singers around he has uh, such an amazing voice and he can do so many things with his voice from really brutal to soft and Im full of emotion uh, I know really few singers who have it all, and, and he got it. So when we were discussing the male singer parts, uh, for me, he was the only option. And the other guys had other, other names as well. But when I played uh, on YouTube some videos from, uh, from uh, Henning, they were all convinced. And you do a lot of grunting? Yeah. What was it like? Did you train to do so many <laughs> grunting parts? No, I just recorded every day a, a bit and also we, we split up the work, Arjen did some grunting as well, uh, Chuck Driesse, keyboard player, did some screams as well. I think w when the, the grunt sounds best after you've eaten a big meal and then after like one hour of uh, singing it's also slowly fading away again. So uh, yeah, we split up the work and we did uh, several parts in several days, so I think that's that that's the right way to do. Then then you can focus on every specific part and make it sound as brutal as possible. Why one? Uh, why after eating a big meal? Yeah, for for grunts you need a slimy throat, <laughs> and uh, for 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 a clean voice, it it can be a disadvantage if you have too much slime, but for grunts it's it's only an advantage. So that's the big difference. And the big meal, is there one meal that, 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 that produces extra slime? Doner kebab. <laughs> Doner kebab.